Hi, I'm John Fesch, and I'm an extension educator. I'm also an arborist and a horticulturist with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Extension Division. And today we're going to talk about lawn renovation. You know, it's been kind of a long summer. It seems like it always is, but uh, certainly this year, in 2019, we've been having some troubles with our lawns. And it kind of started out with the winter, actually. If you think back, we had a lot of snow and ice problems. Of course, that led to all the flooding, but it also led to a lot of lawn problems. And we started to see where snow mold was taking place. We saw some areas where low direct temperature kill was a problem. We saw some areas where water sort of puddled and then froze and refroze. Um, so we started off with kind of some stress as, a, as it was presented to us by Mother Nature from the winter. And then we also went into April and May and that was a time frame where it was a little bit cooler than the normal uh, April and May, whatever normal is for eastern Nebraska. I think it's always something a little bit out of the norm. But we certainly had a cooler than desirable spring as it got started. We had a pretty decent June. And then as we transitioned into July and August, oh my gosh, it seems like it all broke loose and lots and lots of problems with diseases and with insects. Uh, so lots of reasons there might be as to why you need to renovate your lawn. It might be just brown. It might be uh, just various problems that are going on. It might be the neighbors that are causing your lawn problem, whatever they're doing. I was just visiting a landscape today and looking at and figuring out what was wrong with the lawn problem. And as I was visiting with the property owner, she mentioned to me that the neighbor's lawn sprinkler was broken. The house was vacant and they had to figure out how to get a hold of this property owner to shut off their irrigation system because it was kind of causing lots and lots of problems. So little things like that can really be uh, and really should be taken into account. So what's on adjacent properties? It could be a lot of shade from the neighbor's property. You know, you really can't control what their tree is doing and how much sunlight is coming in. So you really need to figure out what's going on. That's the number one thing to do when it comes to the step-by-step -step process in terms of lawn renovation. Step number one, figure out why it died in the first place or why it's sick or why it's ailing in the first place. Turf grass is a full sun plant. And in addition to the, the problem that this uh, client was talking with me about this morning, it was also a shade problem. There was just way too much shade in this one area. Uh, towards the back of the property, uh, they were trying to grow turf grass there. They had a problem with turf grass. They had it all ripped out and resodded, and that grass failed in addition to the first uh, stand of grass. And a lot of it had to do with the, the shade. In addition to the water running through, it got almost no sunlight. It probably got about an hour's worth of sunlight. So for even the most shade tolerant grasses, we're gonna need about three or four hours of sunlight on that area for it to succeed. That's probably, especially in the older parts of town, that's one of the number one problems that I see, just a lot of shade. Now for the newer parts of town, the newer houses, they have almost too much sun. So if it's blazing sun or really heavy shade, that's gonna be one of the first things you think about. And then of course, we always look to uh, irrigation problems where this head, like for example here, if you've got an irrigation uh, device like this, either one you set on the, on the lawn and, and let run, or one that's in the ground, an automatic sprinkler system, this head is supposed to spray over to this head, and this head is supposed to spray back over to that. A lot of times here in the middle, there'll be a big gap where not enough water comes over to this area and certainly not enough over to that area. So we sometimes see gaps with lawn problems and those are really starting to show up now here in August because we haven't had a lot of natural rainfall and without natural rainfall we have to totally 100% rely upon our sprinkler systems which of course are not necessarily designed to be the primary irrigation source. We're supposed to get that from Mother Nature. So that's another possibility. So those are some of the more common things, but that's certainly step one. Figure out what caused the problem to begin with and then fix the problem. If you don't fix that problem, chances are in 2020, you'll be right back here again trying to resolve those kinds of problems. And you know we don't want to start all over. Lawn renovation is a little bit of time and effort. And if we don't have to renovate every year, then we shouldn't have to. So that's something to think about. Fix that original problem. Then, after you've fixed the problem, you've taken care of the grubs, you've sprayed for diseases, you cut the tree down so they have more sunlight, you fix the neighbor's lawn irrigation problem, whatever that was, uh, once you get that problem fixed, then we need to start in on the renovation itself. The first thing is killing off the undesirable grass. In almost all situations, uh, we want to kill off the grass that's there because it's, it's diseased, it's got 
uh, the wrong plant for the wrong place and all that kind of stuff. So we want, almost always want to uh, kill off the grass that's there. And that's best done with a product that's non-selective like Roundup. Now, if you just have a small area, maybe the size of this area that I'm kind of working from today, then a pre-mixed product like this, you just go squirt, 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 and kill off the area if it's a small little area. A lot of times, an area that's adjacent to a patio has been ailing, maybe from dog, uh, dog urine, uh, deposition or just from a lot of compaction. A lot of times it'd be a cut through for the neighbor's kids, that kind of thing. So the fix there is obviously to loosen up the soil and work in some compost and then try to uh, kill that small area. So this is going to work really easy for that smaller area. But for a larger area, you're going to want to use a concentrated product. And this particular uh, formulation is going to mix up enough for a whole lawn. And you would, you would put in a gallon of water in a spray tank like this. Read the instructions here and find out how much of this product you need to put in there. Usually be a tablespoon or three ounces or something along those lines. Easy to calculate and then put in just that amount. Uh, you want to stay away from this natural tendency as well. If two ounces is good, then four ounces is better. Because these products are well researched, well documented, and they come up with the rates. And accordingly, that's what we should be using. So those rates especially. Always a good idea to make sure this is rinsed out ahead of time and then test the product with just water, test the sprayer with just water, and then go ahead and use the, use the Roundup itself. Always a good idea to wear gloves to nitrile or butyl rubber gloves. You can always buy those where you buy the product itself. So it usually takes about 10 days for the Roundup to work. You just want to go over the lawn back and forth, back and forth carefully and evenly so you can see exactly where that Roundup has happened or has happened to fall, and then wait about 10 days. You'll start to see it turning off color after about oh, three or four days, but wait for it to completely go uh, dormant, or in this case, dead. Then the next step is to power rake it. And a lot of people get power raking and aeration confused. The aeration is a device that goes through and pulls out little plugs, and the power rake goes through and pre you know, prepares an entire seed bed, and that's what we want. If you can just think about planting radishes or planting snap beans or corn or something like that, you did that in a bare soil area. There was no turf grass in the way. And that's when we come to uh, putting on lawn seed, that's what we need. We need to have nothing in the way. It needs to look like that area where we planted the uh, radishes. And the power rake is the machine to do that. You can rent those easily and inexpensively at a hardware store or a rental store. Usually you rent them in blocks of time, like two or four hours. They're fairly easy. Usually you need to find a friend with a pickup truck so that you can put it in there, go back and forth over it two or three times. And you can get it to the point where there's lots and lots of bare soil showing. That does a really good job of um, really preparing that seed bed well. Then, next step is right plant, right place. Okay, right plant, right place. We have shady grass and we have sunny grass. Okay, the shady grass is a, an area where maybe you have four or five hours of, of sunlight, and um, another area where you have the sunny grasses maybe about seven, eight, nine hours of sunlight. So you really need to size up that area. And we always recommend going out at several times of the day. Going out with your morning coffee and just seeing an area and how sunny it is. Then coming out about oh, 10 or 11 o'clock and see if the area is still in full sun. Going out a little bit after lunch and just kind of sizing up the area. How sunny is it after lunch? Coming back about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and, and sizing that up. This works really well on a Saturday or a Sunday a day when you're not working so that you have a chance to do this. And then again in the evening. Because a lot of times you think, oh, I have a very sunny lawn, when you're mostly just looking at this in the early morning or the late evening. And those two times count, but don't count nearly as much as the time between 8 and 5. Those are the best amounts of time uh, to really rate and evaluate how much sun that lawn is getting. So if you have uh, a shady lawn, three or four hours of direct sun, then you want to go with the, uh, the shady grasses, which are mostly going to be turf type tall fescue and rye grasses. And then if you have a sunny lawn, then you're going to want to go with the Kentucky bluegrass. Now you can use the tall fescue in the sunny areas, but you can't use the bluegrass in the shady areas. So keep that in mind. Now for small areas, you use a, a spreader like this and you just spread it very evenly. The thing to know about though is the, uh, the lawn seed is very fine. This material is very light and it's very easily carried away with the wind. So if it's not too windy, you can use an easy crank device like this. But if it's, it is a little bit on the windy side, then you're going to want to use what's called a drop spreader. And where you go to the hardware store and rent the power rake, they can easily let you have, well, 
sell you <laughs> a drop spreader, and you can be in good shape that way. Okay, so after the seed is in place, uh, probably need about nine pounds per thousand square feet in a turf type tall setting, turf type tall fescue setting. And in Kentucky bluegrass setting, about three pounds. So again, read the package. It'll tell you how much to use and how, how to put it down. Then at the big step then is after we get it down, we want to keep that area moist. And the key again is moist. That's the target word. Moist, not soggy, and not dry. Uh, many times people get all excited about this process. They water it once or twice, and then they ah, move on. I'm going to go work on my drapes or something. And that's really not the thing. You've got to be committed to this for about three weeks keeping it moist. Now it's gonna work a lot easier if you have a, a sprinkler system, then you just push the button and let the sprinkler system run. But if you have to move uh, hoses and use a device like this, well then maybe you should have started with a small area to begin with, something that's very doable, very convenient for you, as opposed to an entire lawn. That makes it pretty hard to get that going. All right, so then in about three weeks, your new lawn will be up and growing. At that point, we wanna put on starter fertilizer. And you, again, you can buy this at the box store, at the full service garden center, or at the hardware store. But starter fertilizer does a nice job of providing the nutrients that the, uh, the new seed needs after it, it has used up the, the storage material in the seed itself. And that's always a good idea to uh, put on that starter fertilizer. Here's a, here's a little watering tip. You can always buy a timer. If you're gonna be gone for a day or two, you hook up your hose to the timer, and then you don't have to actually be there in order for it to go off at the right time. But this is one of those things that you can use if you're gonna be out of town for a few days, but you wouldn't necessarily wanna depend on this for the entire renovation process. But it can be handy and it can really help you, especially if you're uh, a traveler. But uh, certainly putting it on and doing it at the right time is a good idea. And then of course the starter fertilizer, water that in really well. And then the last step is after that has up and growing and you're looking for a, uh, a final step, uh, putting this on about the 1st of uh, November, Halloween time, is going to finish the process. And this is kind of a winterizer formula. Just a light application of winterizer will really help you finish. So from start to finish, that's lawn renovation. And if you need any help along the way, contact the University Extension Division in Douglas and Sarpy County. Our phone number, 444-7804. We're then more than happy to help you. We've got a whole team of master gardeners who've been trained in this entire process, and they'll be ha happy to help you along the way. I'm John Fesch.